everybody. Welcome back to episode 73, Talk of Fame podcast with your host, Kaya Montini. And I'm so excited to have on actress and singer, Maya Winchop. Thanks so much for coming on, Maya. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So you're basically an actress and singer. What basically made you want to start doing that and being in this industry? So since I was little, I've always wanted to do like... I was in lots of like theater productions Mm -hmm. and since last year I was just like well actually I met um my friend well we're not so close anymore but Millie Davis Mm -hmm. um and I was in characters with her mom that runs it and it was so she kind of inspired me to do on-screen acting Mm -hmm. and so ever since last year I got an agent and I've been just really into that. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Like, do you have like a favorite like theater production or you have like a favorite role they played? Um, I really like Annie mm. um, in theater. And I got to um, portray, um, I didn't book the role, but Degrassi. Mm. Um, I auditioned as one of the roles in that and I just really connected to that role and it was like just like me and a character. Wow, I love that like and plus like you said you're a good friend with Millie Davis and I absolutely love her I follow her on social media and everything like what was something that basically touched you with her and her acting because like she touched me in like many ways with her what she does. Um, well I only knew her when we were younger um so she was filming Wonder at the time, mm-hmm. and it was just like, I don't know, I just like had such a, a strong passion for like everything that she did, and I was just like always so jealous of like everything that she would do, and I was like, oh, I want to be that, like I want to do that. Yeah, I didn't say that to when someone, like when I see someone, I'm myself like, huh? I want to do that too, like it's just a little thing to make me want to do that. Yeah. And so, like, when you're auditioning kind of for a role, how do you usually get into like, the mindset of the character? So, I have to think what just happened before, what happened, what's, like, going on in their mind, what they're feeling. And I usually have to think the emotion that they're feeling and then, like, mind, like, remember a time when I was feeling that and kind of just, like, put myself in their mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I kind of, like, it becomes more real and like I relate it to an event that happened in my life so I can like portray it like how like more realistic that's awesome like was there like a moment where it was kind of like difficult for you to get into a role or was it kind of like oh how am I supposed to get in this role I really never had an experience like this because it really happens all the time with actors Right. So I did. Um, and I had to talk about that with my acting coach. And he told me, he was like, well, everyone always experiences like all these feelings. Like it doesn't have to be a similar event. It just has to be a time when you felt that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So out of all the roles that you get to portray, what role kind of meant the most to you kind of similar to the whole question before? Um, I feel like probably... The one from Degrassi. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Like, were you, like, what was it like for you to do that role, like, in the first place? Like, what was the character like, and, like, how kind of was the experience like? Um, it, w- well, I didn't book the role, so I wasn't oh, able yeah. to, I wasn't yeah. able to do it, but when I was auditioning, it was just, like, when I read the script, it was just, like, it was, like, me talking, like, I was, like, these are all, like, experiences that like I've been through and like experiences of just like that I felt this exact thing and it was just like it was just like it was like basically me with a new name <laughs> yeah yeah like I absolutely love it because it's not like a lot of roles that like are very similar to the actual person that was auditioning for the role which is kind of very rare like what was kind of like your reaction to think like oh this character is so much like me like it's gonna be like so easy kind of for me to portray yeah okay. I was like so excited and I really wanted to book that role and I was like ah, it's like literally me um and it was like I don't know it was just it was just easier to portray and just like it just like I felt more connected to the character mm-hmm. so you have a YouTube channel called Maya's Song what kind of drew you to create a YouTube channel for your music 
So actually my dad created that YouTube channel when I was younger. Um, <laughs> so I don't actually run it, but um, we just wanted to like share my singing online. And yeah, I just like, I wanted to, when I was younger, I wanted to be more of a singer than an actor. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my way of like getting out there. Yeah, like absolutely. Like do you have like a, like a cover that you did because I looked through some of your videos and stuff and they're really all amazing and like thank you like do you have a, like a cover that kind of stuck out to you the most or some or like a song they kind of want to portray like the sing or that kind of stuck out to you a little bit more for the last couple of years I think um the song this is me I really liked mm -hmm. um I got to perform that at like a big party um, a few years ago, and that was really fun. Um, okay, is that the, like, the Devil Will Vile song or the Greatest Showman song? Greatest Showman. Oh, I was just to say, like, I'm the biggest yeah. Greatest Showman fan ever, so I'm like, I, I was like, I knew, I really knew like, when to set it. And so, like, that song really has like, a true meaning, though. He's like, mm -hmm. it really says, don't change for anyone because, like, you're really amazing the way you are, and especially people like around our age are really kind of trying to fit in and change ourselves yeah fit in. that's really something that people really shouldn't do because you should people should really like you for who you are not like trying to fake trying to be fake a little bit try to act yeah. a little bit to be liked definitely yeah and so during the pandemic how do you get motivation to kind of keep going with being in the, in the industry and everything so it's very hard. A lot of the time, I don't have motivation to do it. Yeah. Um, I kind of have to just force myself to do it. Um, but definitely just like kind of reminding myself like what I'm doing it for and like just having fun with it and thinking it's not like it's not like a job. It's just, like fun. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but it's been definitely hard to get motivation and it's like I try really hard to get it, but sometimes it's, it's not always there. <laughs> yeah, like I'm saying that the way, like I literally started this podcast during the pandemic and it's literally so hard to get motivation. Sometimes I'll be like, God, I'm really not in the mood to do this interview today. Like I'm just yeah. that mood. I just want to lay down, watch television all day, just take a little step back. I'm thinking to myself, like, I need to get this done. And I know it's a hobby and everything, so I'm just trying to do I'm like to myself, like, Kylie, you need to kind of force yourself to get off your butt and do this interview because you, got, you do not want to cancel. That's something I really hate doing. But like, how did you kind of like force yourself? Like, how was kind of your motivation to get actually get up, get up and actually do some things? So um, I actually went to Pinterest board that helped me um, with like just a bunch of like actors and like in film po progress. And that always like, usually helps motivate me um so I just look at that um and I try to pretend that I'm like the character that I'm playing like I don't I try to pretend that it's like not me so it's like that gives me more motivation as well <laughs> yeah like that sometimes like I want to watch a movie you know, as I just say I'm familiar with this movie sometimes I'll act it out like do you ever do that sometimes when you're watching a movie yes yeah, always yeah, I always do that too. I'm like, oh, I'm always saying lines. Like, you just have the lines memorized and you're trying to be this person. And I'm like, I'm not an actor. I don't know what to do. Like, this is something I always kind of did. But like, do you have anyone that you kind of look up to as an actress and singer that's kind of in general? Everyone that you look up to? Um, so yeah, McKenna Grace. Oh, I love, yeah, her I love her so much. She's just like amazing. And like, my dream is like to be friends with her. Like, oh my God. Um, she's just such an amazing actor, and she's an amazing singer too. Mm -hmm. And I love her songs, and Me too. just like her acting is so good. Like I look up to her so much. Mm -hmm. Me too. Like, have you seen her in Full Four House? Yes, she was amazing in Four mm -hmm. House. Like she yeah. like struck me from there, and her music, especially. Her debut single, I think this was her debut single, Haunted House, I think was her debut single. That was my favorite one. Yeah, yeah that's my favorite one, too. And I, like, I, she's so talented for her age. Like, she, I think yeah. she's, like, younger than me, probably. I'm not sure. I have to do a little bit more research. But, like, I think she's, like, somewhere to our age group. But do you think, like, someone is actually that talented and actually growing, starting to become, a, become big? And she's 
been in the industry for a couple of years. So she's yeah. like kind of been around since basically when we were both kids and when she was a kid. And like to think yeah. like she's doing all these amazing things at like 15, 16 years old is amazing. Yeah. It's really Definitely. like it's really makes me a motivation to get like try harder to keep going. Yeah. Do you think like there's so many people our age that are really shining a bright on a lot of people and people look up to them? It's something that really kind of pushes me and never it helps me like never give up on everything. Yeah. And so it like, kind of since quarantine started back in like 2020, how much do you think it has changed in terms of, like acting and songwriting since the pandemic started? Um, so definitely a lot. Um, I've been trying to, um, like, it's hard because the auditions are all self-tapes instead of in-person, which I never really got to experience an in-person audition. Like, I've been um, there once, um, mm. but um, I kind of started while I was in quarantine, so it wasn't that much of a difference for me, but, like, I just never got to experience what it was like out of quarantine. Yeah, like, what's the hardest part about doing self-tapes? I, I always wanted to know that because a lot of people that I talk to always do self-tapes or since, like, quarantine, they couldn't go in person. But what was, like, kind of the hardest part for you? Because I always wanted to know. Definitely, like, setting up and, like, putting the backdrop up, getting the, like, the camera right and, like, the lighting. That's always the hardest part. That takes, like, at least, like, 15 minutes to do. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so it was just, like, it's just very time consuming. Yeah. Uh, and then it's, but it's also easier in a way because you got to like do multiple takes and like watch it over and see which one you like the best. So it has yeah, grown like, like if you were in person, then it's like a little one take and done. Like it's, like, yeah. it's kind of a little better since if you get to retake it a couple of times and make sure you like it. But then in person auditions, you're like, oh, I yeah. messed up, then, then blah, you're done. Yeah. So it's a little kind of more or less like stress free I'll say a little sus free yeah definitely and also if you like forget your lines you can like redo it and like it's not like you have well usually I think in person they give you more than one chance but no. I'm not sure but um um it's just much yeah less stressful and like more easier yeah and so the final question for the interview is uh, what is some advice for younger generations that like to be like an actress or a singer or be in the entertainment industry one day I would definitely say to start young. Um, I missed out a lot because I only started this year and yeah. like everyone my age is already like the resume is like crazy and I've done like a few things. Um, so it's just like bigger competition. So it's definitely easier to start young and build up your resume. Yeah, like I have like this is how I kind of like feel because like I started the whole podcast thing in April 2021 I and I was always a very kind of shy girl and I'm being like that's how a lot of people are when they're in the human industry like they're always kind of shy or something kind of you know, a little that platform and yeah. I now I think about it I'm like why did I start this earlier in yeah. and build up my resume and actually try to get build my connections more and so started in, in late quarantine when things are kind of starting to open up but like, what kind of, that kind of stuck out to you? Like, what kind of kept you busy and everything during quarantine since we were allowed to leave the house? And, like, for me personally, I thought it was going to last two weeks or a couple mm -hmm. of weeks. So I thought, oh, it's going to be the best thing ever. I get to watch, relax and everything. I'm sure that's how everyone felt. But how did you kind of stay busy throughout this time? Because for me, it was so difficult to stay busy and everything. So I want to kind of know what your, what your take is. Um, so I definitely like relied on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I enjoy doing that. Um, I didn't really do much of a quarantine. I kind of just like sat in my room, went on my phone, yeah. and, like watch Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing big. I wouldn't really use my time for anything good. Yeah, um, I'm the same way. I'm like always in my room on my phone watching TikTok, watching Netflix. So that's like my yeah. go-to little thing. But do you have a favorite Netflix show or like a movie? I really like, I really like, um, what's it called? Shameless. Oh, yeah. Shameless is a good, good one. Yes. And Ginny and Georgia is amazing, too. Oh, I'm obsessed with Ginny and Georgia. Like, this, this like, recently does got done with season two of filming. So, yeah. it should be out soon. I'm so excited for it. 
Yeah, <laughs> my friend's okay. actually in that show, and I was always ex- it's so exciting to see her. Yeah, and like that, I really like binge watch it like every week. Like it's something that yeah. I really can't stop watching. And plus, I've been a fan of Brian Howie, who played Georgia for a long time, so I knew who she was in Orange, is basically why I watched the show. Well, well, maybe not the reason why, but like a little bit the reason. Yeah. But, like, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. And it was so good to speak with you. And we'll definitely see you soon for sure. Thanks so much for coming on, Maya. Of course. It was nice speaking to you, too. <laughs> thank you. We'll definitely see you soon. Thanks so much. Of course. Okay, bye. Bye.